How should the gospel transform our actions and reactions as Christians? That's what this book and this video is all about. Let's get started. Hey guys, Joe here, back to the word today with a book review of Paul David Tripp's newest book, Reactivity, How the Gospel Transforms Our Actions and Reactions. I love this book. I got this book from Crossway and I wanted to share it with all of you through a five minute review. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. So first up, who is this for? This is really about the gospel transforming how we live as Christians in our reactions in just daily life, but predominantly online. This is great for high school students, those high school graduates, college students, those who are trying to represent Christ in the world and want God to govern their actions. It's also really good for those who do a one-on-one -on -one discipleship as we talk about some of these issues, and even for churches, pastors, leaders who are navigating some of those things in the church as far as people who are having disagreements. It's just a great gospel treatment on how we are to act and react as Christians. So second, who wrote it is written by Paul David Tripp. If you don't know who that is, he's written many books. He's really good. He's um, been a seminary professor at Westminster for a long time, has since moved on and writes books. He's done counseling. He's got background in counseling. Um, just so good. Gospel saturated. He's written New Morning Mercies. He's written other books for Crossway and other publishers like How People Grow. A great author. Every time I read his book, it's, it's, or books, it's like coming back to a faithful friend. And he is about applying the gospel to real life where we are in the already not yet tension of our Christian walk. He does an excellent job in that in every book. And so I'd encourage you to read any of his books. Just so, so good. Third, what stands out about this book? Now, what I'm going to do first is show you the quality of this book. So this book is a 162 or so page read is really quality made. So you have this, this nice cover right here. And then I'm going to show you the inside. Look at Crossway going the extra mile with this insert that has some of that reactivity shapes on. I just feel like it's super good quality. And then if you take the dust cover off, it's designed really well. So you have this, this uh, jacket right here. So anyway, the quality of the printing stands out, but you're not buying it for that reason. You're buying it for what's on the inside. And so inside it shines through quality as well. He talks about the purpose for writing this book. And this is one of the things I love about Paul David Tripp. He says, the purpose of this book on page 12 is to look at the culture of toxic reactivity, which seems to touch all of us daily through the lens of the gospel. He wants us to see this area of life through the gospel lens. How does God, God call us to live in this cultural moment? Moving on, he talks about his hope for the book. My hope is that looking at what we are saying to one another and how we are saying it through the lens of the gospel will not just inform us, but will also convict us and transform us. So as a gospel community, we will stand above the toxicity that seems to be everywhere around us and shine as a city on a hill in a sadly darkened world. And that's on page 14. I think it's so good. We live in a toxic world. There's lots of outrage online. Even some of that is worshipped as passion and anger and outrage. We love to see those things on TV and to be entertained by them. And he says, we need to long for something different as gospel people, and we need to act and react in the world in a different way. He moves on continuing through the book. He says, here is the concern of this book, and really kind of the reason he wanted to write about it. He says, reactivity is not new. The fact that people respond in, in bitter, anger, disrespectful ways is not new. You can trace it back to the Garden of Eden. He says, what is new is that this way of responding has become more and more normalized. And we cannot, we must not normalize a reactivity culture that is more of a culture of harm than a culture of 
grace. And so he's going to talk about both in this book, what we see in the world as harm and how we are called as Christians to live with a culture of grace. And that quote is from page 20 and 21. And so then he talks about ways we cannot normalize this in the church. And I wanted to read them briefly to you. He says, we cannot normalize a following behavior. So we have emotionally driven responses. We cannot normalize anger-driven responses. We cannot normalize disrespectful responses. We should not normalize self-righteous responses. We should not normalize vengeful responses or individualism responses or the love of controversy responses or even tribalism responses. And then he continues to show us a better way throughout this book. The table of contents is really good. I know time just expired, but... Here, here, I just want to get this out there. He moves from reactivity, what it is, into wholesome talk. Then he goes through the five biblical worldview foundations and how we're supposed to operate out of those. He talks about sin, about grace, about identity, glory, and eternity, how we have to keep those in mind as we're trying to react and act as Christians in the world. And then he goes through some of the combatants of ourself and acting and reacting as Christians. He talks about how we need to have selflessness, how we have to embrace limits. We have to have the right values. Do we value what God values? Do we have dignity and of all people, give dignity to all people, and then also focus on God's presence in the situation. So 12 shorter chapters in total, 162 page read time. That's all we have for the five or so minute review. I want to end with one last quote from the book. It's towards the end. And it says this, it's the central question of this book is this, in the situations, relationships, and social media interactions of our daily lives, do we value what God values? And so he takes this book to show us in our lives what God values and how he calls us to live that out as Christians. I would be hard pressed to to say for anyone, this would not be beneficial. There are people who need to read this book. You know people in your life who need to read this book. You know people in your social media feed who need to read this book. And I think all of us would benefit from picking up and reading this book. And that's just a blanket statement. I think Sam Alberry said, I'm hard to think of any press to think of anyone who would not benefit from having the gospel shape their actions and reactions as Christians. So with that, um, until next time, I just want to encourage you to continue to read, treasure, follow the word. If you have questions, I'd love to hear about them in the discussion. If you're going to pick up this book, or if you've read this book, or if you have a favorite Paul Tripp book, I would love to hear about that in the discussion as well. Continue to wonder at God's word and wonder to explore it daily. And I'll see you guys soon.